Who's going to be baptized this morning? So, Linda, I ask, Brenda, I ask you to repeat after me. I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God, the Son of the Living God, and I take Him now as my Lord and Savior. I take Him now as my Lord and Savior. Brenda, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost on your confession. to celebrate this morning. Come on. Let's worship him and sing holy water. Hey. All right, 
church. I want to hear you sing it just as loud as me. Come on. Sing it out. Say, God, I'm on my knees again. God, I'm begging, please, again. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Walking down these desert roads, water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Oh, you're forgiven. this morning as we head into this new year. I want you to sing it with me. Come on. I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to. But Lord, with your strength, 
I've got no excuse Cause broken people are exactly who you use So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness Give me a heart like David, Lord be my defense So I can face with confidence You took a shepherd boy And made him a king So I'm gonna trust you And give you everything That's right. I'll be a conqueror Cause you fight for me I'll be a champion Claiming your victory so give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense so I can face my giants with confidence. I'm going to sing and shout and shake the walls. Won't stop until I see them fall Gonna stand up, step out when you call Jesus, Jesus I'm gonna sing and shout and sing the wall Won't stop until I see them fall Gonna stand up, step out when you call Jesus, come on church, let me hear you sing it out So give me faith Happy New Year to all of you. Right now, we are going to worship through our time of offering, and I'm going to share with you one of my favorite verses that I'm sure is familiar to most of you as well. It's John 3, 16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. That verse should be the foundation for our giving. God's motivation for giving was love. He gave himself in the person of Jesus, and God gave in response to our need. Our giving is a reminder of the blessings that God gave us, and he continues to give us through his son, Jesus Christ. You can give your offering today as you leave in one of the giving walls or the giving drop box. You can text to give the number on the screen, or you can give online at 1c.church. We will now go into our time of communion. So if you'll take out the cup that you were given when you came in this morning, there's two tabs on the cup. The top tab contains your bread and the second tab contains your juice. Here in a moment, I will pray. And after I pray, I invite you to take your communion whenever you are ready. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy New Year's. I like the fact that it encouraged me to sit and have that intentional time of looking back over the previous year and thinking about the things that worked well, some of the things that maybe didn't work so well, and what were some of the lessons that I learned along the way. But New Year's Day is also a day of looking forward. We look ahead with eager anticipation of all the things that God has in store for us in the new year. To me, that's a good illustration of what we're doing when we partake in the Lord's Supper. We look backward to our past and see Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. His blood that was shed covers us and we are forgiven because he died a death that we deserve. 
We live by faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross, but that is only half of the picture. 1 Corinthians 11.26 says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Here is the other half of the picture. When we partake in the Lord's Supper, we are looking forward. We have faith in the return of Christ. The Bible tells us that he will return again one day and he will make all things new. As we take our communion today, we remember the past and we anticipate the future. We remember our Lord who died, but he is not dead. He lives and will return to earth one day to proclaim his own. We have a living hope because we have a living Lord. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for this time where we can come together in this first day of this year, Lord, and celebrate your name and the victory that you claimed on the cross for every one of us. Lord, I pray that you bless our time together. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Well, Happy New Year. You know, I'm excited for the new year, and I want to let you know how we're going to get the, the, the year started off. So the next two weeks, next week, what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you the vision that we have for our church. I'm excited to do that. And then after that, on January the, the 15th, we're going to kick off our annual At The Movie series, and we're going to start with a blockbuster hit, Top Gun Maverick. How many of you guys have seen that before? Anybody? All right, well, if you've seen the movie, you know that there are mustaches everywhere, right? And so... Here's what we're going to do. I want to challenge all the men for the next two weeks to grow the best mustache that you can. And we're going to have a photo booth set up out in the lobby. And then on the 15th, we're going to stop by the, the photo booth, take your picture, and then the church is going to vote on who's got the most epic mustache. All right? Your, your wives are going to love you for this. Well, we have made it to another year. 2023, here we are. And I think that we've got a lot to be excited about, but to be honest with you, I, I thought that we'd be just a little bit further along than what we are. As a kid growing up, I always assumed that by the year 2023, we'd be able to teleport from one place to another. I, I figured that by now we wouldn't be receiving those phone calls about extending our car warranties because we've all had plenty of opportunities to get that done. I'm surprised that we don't have a universal cure for cancer by now. I'm surprised that we are still so divided as a nation. I thought that those battles would have long been over. You know, I'm just a little disappointed that we're not further than what we are. And to make it even more personal, I thought that I'd be further along by 2023. I thought that I'd be a more patient father. I thought I would be a more understanding and better friend. I, I believed that last year in 22, I would have accomplished more than I did professionally and personally. And I don't stop and think about that very often, but I guess because it's a new year, you kind of look back and you say, wow, you know, I, I thought I'd be more disciplined. I thought I would be less selfish and less prideful. In January is usually the time where we begin to track out what our, our life is going to look like over the next 12 months. And researchers, they say that the exact same resolutions are made every single year. And so I want to share with you the top 10 list of New Year's resolutions. These aren't going to be any surprise to you. Number one on the list is to lose weight, to decrease debt, to get physically fit, to eat healthy, learn something new, drink less alcohol, quit smoking, reduce stress, Take a trip somewhere, and then the last one is to volunteer to help others in some way. Now, how many of you would be honest and admit that you came up short with one of your resolutions in 2022? Anybody? All right, you're not alone. How many of you accomplished one of the big goals that you'd set out for in 2022? Anybody? Did you know that research shows that 80% of people who make resolutions, they won't keep them through the month of January? And I don't tell you that this morning to discourage you from making resolutions. Instead, I tell you that to encourage you to have some determination. For us to step up and say, you know what, this year is going to be different. This year is the year that I'm going to accomplish the goals that I set. In Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, Solomon, he says, When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. And it just seems like we have all these different areas in our life where we'd like to see some drastic change. And the Apostle Paul is the man that wrote the book of Ephesians. And he was a man that experienced some pretty radical change in his life. His given name was Saul. And Saul, he was this up-and-coming Jewish leader. And he, he didn't believe in the resurrection. He didn't believe in Christianity. In fact, he viewed, those, uh, he, views, he viewed those things as a threat to Judaism. And so he set out and he made it his goal to arrest all the Christians with the ultimate goal of having them all put to death. But then one day, Saul would become a believer in Jesus. He was on this road to Damascus, and as he was traveling, he, Jesus Christ appeared to him. And Saul, he was blinded by this great light, and he was blinded for three days, and, and that would definitely be something that would get your attention. And Saul, he becomes a believer, and then his name was changed to Paul to show the, the change that had taken place in his life. And maybe you've had a day like that, a day when Jesus became real. And if you've not had that day, maybe today is going to be that day. But Paul... In his letter to the Ephesians, he's talking about how the Gentiles, which is somebody that's not a Jew, are living in sin. These people are doing whatever they want, and they don't even feel the least bit guilty about it. And so now with the background set, let's dive in. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to start with verses 20 through 24. It says, But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you've heard about Jesus and you've learned the truth that comes from him, 
Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Now, I told you that 80% of people will give up on their goals by January, but did you know that research shows that only 9% of Americans will actually accomplish their New Year's resolutions? And so that means that we start off good, but the success starts to fade as the year begins to progress. And so how do we change the statistics? How can we do better? Well, I think there's different steps that we can take, and I think the first step that we've got to do is we've got to eliminate some of our old habits. You've got to eliminate your old habits. If you keep doing the same thing, you can't expect a different outcome or a different result. If you go out every Friday night and you hang out with the same friends and you go to the same places and you always end up making bad decisions, you probably need to change up where you're going and probably need to change who you're hanging out with. Albert Einstein, he said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And so if you don't want to miss church on the weekends in 2023, stop staying up so late on Saturday night. Or maybe you need to start saying no to sports or other events that are going to keep you from accomplishing your goal. If you tend to eat entirely too much whenever you go out to your favorite restaurant, maybe you should limit yourself to only going there once a month instead of going two or three times a week. When it comes to New Year's resolutions, whether they're physical or professional or spiritual, we know that we're going to fail in a lot of these different attempts. But have you ever stopped and wondered why we fail? I think a lot of our failures come back to us having some really great goals, but we've got some really poor strategies. And so in other words, we're we're willing to make room for new resolutions, but we're not willing to let go of some of the other things that are in our life. Whenever we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and are baptized, we're given the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God living inside of us. And whenever we make room for Him, we've got to let other things go. In Acts chapter 2, In verse 38, it says, Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so as the Holy Spirit comes in, he's going to begin to force other things out. And think about how that looks in your own life. What is it in your life that you need to get rid of? What is it in your life that you maybe need to unplug in order to be able to reach some of these goals, in order to to see some of the things that God has in store for you in 2023? Well, Paul, he says in this passage that we started off with today that we've got to replace our own sinful desires with something holy. So that maybe means that you're going to have to change some of your habits. Like I said earlier, maybe you need to change some of your friends. In Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 1, it says, Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. And so we've got to get rid of the things that are keeping us from growing in our faith. And here's the crazy part. They may not be bad things. We've talked about this before, but sometimes the things that are keeping us from growing, they're not bad. They're, They're good things. They're just not the best things. Some of you, believe it or not, you're too involved in the church. You're you're serving in so many different areas and so many different ministries that your family never sees you. Your family has to be your number one ministry because if you're not successful at home, you're not going to be successful in the church. Or if your kids are involved in sports, those are good things. I love sports. But if you have your kids involved in so many different things that coming to church doesn't always happen, then those sports are weighing you down. Pastor Josh Pruitt, just this past week, he he sent out a tweet, and I think this is so good, I want to share with you what it says. He says that there's this four-generation fade. And so what happens is with generation number one, you got parents that don't make church a priority for their kids. And so what happens is second generation, the kids, they grow up, and they make it even less of a priority for their kids. And then when you get to the third generation, the kids grow up, and they make it no priority for their kids. And then by the time you get to that fourth generation, the kids, they grow up with no concept of God. And he says this, our priorities today affect generations. I felt like that is so powerful with where we're at as a society. You know, the Christian life is choosing between good, better, and the best. And Paul, he says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 and 16, he says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. 
Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. And so how do we get motivated? How do we get motivated and start exercising? How do we make it past the book of Genesis and our Bible reading plan this year? How, how do we change our mindset from wanting to be served to serving others? How, how do we eliminate the things that have such a grip on our lives? Well, I think the problem is we want this new and improved us, but we also want to keep the old us too. But it doesn't work that way. No, the only way that you can develop a new you is to get rid of your old habits. I think the, the second step that we need to take is to stay positive. When it comes to these goals, we've got to stay positive. I think that we fail in a lot of our resolutions because we approach things with the same old attitude. I hear it every single year. I hear people say, oh, I didn't even bother to make goals because I never accomplished them. But our attitude is key to whether or not we're going to be able to accomplish the things that we want. You know, we've got to replace the negative with positive. We've got to replace ungratefulness with thankfulness and humility. Or we've got to replace pride with humility. You've got to have a new attitude. Allow for the Holy Spirit to help you to see things in a different perspective. And here's what happens when we begin to change our attitude. We start to say things like, you know what, if I lose weight, then I'll have more energy at home and I'll have more energy at work. And if I stop smoking, then I can lengthen my life and I'll have more time to spend with my kids and my grandkids. And if I start reading the Bible, I'm going to understand the Bible better. And if I begin sharing my faith with other people, then maybe those people will, will come into a relationship with Jesus and I'll be able to see them in heaven. You see, these are big things and your attitude is key. But there's got to be something more that motivates this change of attitude. And the Apostle Paul, he, he talks about it in Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. He says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he'll find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. And then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And then the third step that I think we need to take is don't give up. Even when it gets tough, we got to be determined to not give up. And this change in our life is one that's ongoing. It's not a one-time thing. God is constantly wanting to do a new thing in our life, and He's constantly wanting to work in us if we're willing to learn new lessons. And things that we can do to prevent us from giving up is to make church a priority. We need to, to be reading our Bible daily so we can know the best way to live life. We need to spend time daily in prayer so we can get to know God better. It's not enough for us to say that we want to change if we're not really willing to, to change our actions and our choices. In Philippians chapter 3, in verses 13 and 14, Paul says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And God, he is not nearly as concerned with where you've been as he is with where you're heading. And for those of us who have been Christians for a really long time, if we're not careful, we can slowly get comfortable and we can begin, begin to just go through the motions. We, we start to play the game of Christianity. And so we come to church semi-often. We write a decent check and drop it into the offering so that we don't feel guilty. But as far as putting on new self, no, that's, that's something we did a long time ago. That, that was a, something that we did 20 years ago. But that's not what Jesus is talking about here. He's saying that we should be excited about our faith every single day. In Philippians 1, in verse 6, it says, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. And we're a work in progress. God is not done with us yet. And I know for me personally, I am such a work in progress. I have such a long way to go. I want to finish up today by, by sharing some goals that I've made for the, for the new year. And I, I want to challenge you today to, to make some goals. And I did this a few years ago, but I've grouped them into four different categories. And hopefully as we go through these, these different categories today, it'll help you as you try to decide how God might want you to, to, to shape your goals for 2023. And so the first thing that I want to challenge you to do is to prayerfully develop an intellectual goal. Really, come up with one this year. Develop an intellectual goal. Because there's a difference between a knower and a learner. A knower is a know-it-all. 
They're a person that you can't teach anything. They think they're already convinced that they know everything there is to know. But a learner is somebody that's completely different. A learner is a sponge. and They're constantly looking for ways that they, they can grow in knowledge. James, he tells us in James chapter 1 and verse 5, he says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he'll give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. And so if you lack wisdom, you can go to God and you can ask him for his wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 16, in verse 16, it says, how much better to get wisdom than gold and good judgment than silver? And wisdom, I think, is something that we should all go after. It goes so much deeper than knowledge. And in Christianity, it can change you because the Bible not only reaches your head, the Bible also reaches your heart. If you've got any questions about God or the Bible, have the intelligence to study them and find those answers for yourself. Because God is not asking you to take a blind leap of faith into the darkness. No, what he's asking, he's asking you to take a step of faith into the light. And he welcomes questions. And he loves it when people genuinely are searching for answers. And I want us to reach our goals this year. Someone once said that reaching a goal is only as significant as the goal is good. And so this year for my intellectual goal, I've set out to read one book a month. I want to try to read uh, six books this year that are going to help me with my professional development and then six books that are going to help me with my personal development. And so what is it for you? Maybe, maybe your goal can line up with James chapter 1 and verse 5 and you can start off every Monday morning asking God for the wisdom that you need to face the challenges and the problems that you're going to face during the week. Well, second goal that I want to challenge you to pray for is a physical goal. Prayerfully develop a physical goal. And some people, they, they feel that whenever you talk about the physical, that it's not as spiritual. But the Apostle Paul, he, he tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verses 19 and 20, he says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. And so you must honor God with your body. And God, he's blessed us with a physical body. The Bible says that Jesus, he grew in wisdom and in stature. And so I think we got to start somewhere. And we're all at different points when it comes to setting a physical goal. But this week, prayerfully figure out how you can develop a physical goal. And so my goal for 23 is going to be to exercise at least five days a week and to, to have it be at least 30-minute workouts. And another thing that I've been dealing with for about the past 18 months is I've been dealing with uh, some back trouble. And so I'm hoping that I can get my back fixed this year. And if I'm able to do that to kind of celebrate being healthy again, I'd like to run another half marathon this fall. But I, but I know that whenever I exercise, I have less anxiety. I know that I've got more energy to play with my kids. And I definitely feel like I'm more patient at home. And there's so many different benefits that come from exercise. And, and one of them is that exercise teaches you discipline. You'll, you'll realize that you can do more than you ever imagined was even possible. And who knows? Maybe you'll end up lengthening your life so that you can impact and reach other people for the next life. But take care of your body because God gave us these bodies. Make a specific goal. Maybe for you, you say, you know what, this year, I'm going to walk at least 10,000 steps a day. Or maybe I'm going to try to lose 10 pounds by March 1st. Or my goal is to, uh, to, to maybe cut soda out of my diet. Now, those are just some ideas, but I want to challenge you to, to develop a physical goal. The third goal is to develop a spiritual goal. I think this one's so important for each one of us to develop a spiritual goal. My spiritual goals for this year are going to be to spend more time in prayer in the morning, to read through the whole Bible again this year. And then another thing that I just started up this morning is I'm going through this book this year called Quest 52, a 15-minute-a-day, year-long pursuit of Jesus. And if Jesus found it important that he needed to pull away and spend some time talking to God, how much more do you and I need to take time to, to spend one-on-one -on -one time with God? Jesus, he would fast at times. He would spend time praying. He would spend time pouring himself into other people. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 7 and 8, it says, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. It's right here what this scripture is saying is that physical training, it's good for a little amount of time, but you need to know that it's temporary. And so Paul, he's not knocking physical exercise here. He's simply saying the physical is only for this time, but what the spiritual is for forever. And we know, like I said, physical exercise is important, but developing your, your spiritual life, 
it's way more important. Maybe your spiritual goal is to change some of your friendships. Maybe some of you need to add accountability into your life this year. For some of this year, maybe this is going to be the year that you trust God with your finances and you start tithing. Maybe your spiritual goal is going to be to invite somebody to come to church with you before Easter. And then the fourth and the final goal that I want to encourage you to develop is a relationship goal, a relational goal. You know, what could be a relational goal for you in 23? For me, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to find a way to meet people that I wouldn't normally meet. And that means that I'm going to have to get out in the community. I'm going to have to maybe do some things this year that I normally wouldn't do or attend events that I maybe normally wouldn't attend. But you see, our church says that we're all about connecting unconnected people to Jesus Christ. But it is hard for us to bring people into a relationship with Jesus if we don't have a relationship with them. And as you know, in our county, there are 18,000 people who are unconnected. They, they don't know Jesus. And so it's up to us. Someone has to tell them the good news and try to change the course of their eternity. And so we've got to be out there and we've got to be looking for opportunities. And that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. It's going to take work. It's going to take time. It's going to take creativity. But as we start this new year, I pray that as a church, we'll be able to say with the Apostle Paul, whenever he said in Philippians chapter 3, in verses 13 and 14, he says, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the start of a new year, and I thank you for the, the fresh start that so many of us need. And God, we do, we thank you. You did so many great things in our church in 2022, and we ask that you move again and you do even better things in 23. God, use us to step out of our comfort zones and to, to try to reach these unconnected people that we talked about today. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the opportunity of a fresh start. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, if you would stand up with me. Just receive this blessing this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. Sing Amen. And I
and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you Thank you all so much for worshiping with us this morning. What a great way to start off 2023. If this is your first time with us, we have a gift for you and we would love the chance to meet you if you'd stop by the Next Steps area out in the middle of the lobby. Last thing I have for you before you go, we are excited to have Mac Powell coming in concert here at the church on Friday, February 17th. It's a Friday night at 7 p.m. It's gonna be an incredible concert, one you're not gonna wanna miss. You can buy those tickets online at 1c.church or out in the lobby. That is it, hope you all have a great day.